Hi, I'm Brian, owner of Design Flow Heating and Cooling out of Eldersburg, Maryland. Home of the 100% satisfaction guarantee. We are a water furnace geothermal pro, and we are here today on site with, at a client's house, gonna go over a uh, transition and what it looks like, what an experience looks like with Design Flow Heating and Cooling. Today we're on site at one of our clients' house getting ready to do a two-zone, two-system geothermal conversion. Now this particular customer already has natural gas, they live right in the heart of Eldersburg, so what we're going to do is install what's called a hybrid heat pump. And we can do that with geothermal and air source heat pumps, but this customer decided to go the energy efficient route with the geothermal. So what we do is we replace the gas furnace, we put the, the water furnace manufacturer's coil on top of the unit and then we're gonna put a condenser back in the corner here. Now the condenser is gonna be inside, so now we're not gonna get the expansion and contractions out of the metals. It's gonna be 60 couple degrees to 70 degrees in this space all the time, so the equipment inherently lasts a lot longer. Part of this project, we're also going to be installing a steam humidification system. The importance of a humidifier is to put the moisture back in the air for sinuses, for allergens, for if you have nice furniture or hard woods to keep them from drying and cracking out. And it also makes the air more dense, thus making it feel warmer, like we have the feels like temperature on the weather. We have that indoors as well, except for we don't have the wind factor. We have just the temperature and the humidity. And it's the same goes in the summertime, the more moisture we can wring out, because here in Maryland, we're in a very wet market during the summer months, it makes the air thinner, thus feeling warm. So the runtime for multi-stage equipment is a great thing. This is gonna be a two-stage system. So it's a three-ton unit, and the way the two stages work is, first stage is two tons of cooling, second stage is the additional third, and that's all controlled via the thermostat. We're also gonna be replacing this here water heater. Um, as you can see, there's some corrosion here on top of the piping. There's some on the water piping as well on both sides and they put a reduction here on an angle, which you cannot do. The reduction always has to be in the vertical position. And there's no emergency drain pan. So what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna lift this water heater up. We're gonna pipe it over to, I'll put an emergency drain pan underneath of it. We're gonna pipe it over to the floor drain. So if we get a small leak, it's contained. We're also gonna put in what's called a flood stop system. So in that drain pan, we put an electronic sensor that attaches to an electronic valve that is battery operated. And so it gets installed here on the cold water inlet to your water heater. Then if it detects water, it slams closed. And the worst case that's gonna happen is you're gonna empty this tank, whether it be 60, 80, however many gallon tank you have. Versus if you're going on vacation or you're at work and this happens at 8 a.m., this thing is gonna continue to pump water until you go home, until somebody shuts it off. So it really mitigates large water damage issues. And same with this unit here, we also put emergency drain pans under every HVAC unit we install, whether it be in an attic, basement, crawl space, doesn't matter where, because if the drain line ever backs up, we want it to be contained into a small pan. And then we put the furnace up on risers, so if it did leak, the furnace is not laying in water. And then inside the pan is a leak detection switch for the HVAC unit, and it will shut the unit down and thus you start to get warm, coming to take a look. Now you have a small pan with some water in it that you can easily take a shot back, clean out, figure out what the problem is, resolve it, move on. Versus it's gonna keep running. And if you're in an unfinished basement like this, where you're not down here every single day, you might not know it for days or for even weeks. And it's gonna make a mess and then you have to mold and all that kind of stuff that comes along with water damage as we know. We wanna give everybody here the full design flow experience when we replace a standard unitary air source system, whether it be gas furnace, AC, or heat pump, or a standard hybrid heat pump that's air source. All right, so we're now outside here. The drilling company has pulled up. Um, over here is the drilling rig, and here we have some mats to protect the surface because this rig is extremely heavy. Now they have to back this rig all the way up this driveway, loop around, and it's quite an operation. And obviously, you'll see right here where we got our flags. That's our two drill marks. There's six tons of geo-looping going in here, and it's gonna be trenched in over to the corner of the house, and we'll get to show you that a little bit later as that, that part of the project takes place. Um, so as you can see, this is quite, a, quite an operation, 
Um, but once this is all done, the infrastructure is here and you'll have geo for, you'll, the loop will blast you for 50 years. Um, so they're getting set up, they got their water truck here and, and we're ready to start drilling. I'm excited. All right, so we just finished up this project in Eldersburg, Maryland. It's two three-ton water furnace geothermal systems. Uh, they did not have geothermal, as we had mentioned before, um, and wanted to go take a moment to go through all the things that we corrected. Um, so first and foremost, we put the emergency drain pan that we had talked about down low here. Uh, in the pan is a leak detection switch. So if this drain line backs up, the unit freezes up, pan fills up, shuts the system down, you start to get warm or cold because this is a condensing furnace that makes water in the winter and shuts the system down. You come down, look, everything's concentrated to a small area, very easy to clean up. This is a four inch media filter system, which are wonderful airflow. They're very budget friendly to have installed, but they do a great job for what they are. Um, up here is the April Air 800 steam humidifier. And as we had talked about before, there's different types of steam humidifiers. This one has a dispersion tube that goes right up into the supply ductwork. And we also mount external, should I say, uh, air pressure switch, because we always want to make sure that we have air moving through the system if we're going to put raw steam into the duct. So this is what they call a safety mechanism. Um, so this unit can now humidify and run the blower fan in this furnace without the heat having to run. So we can control to the optimal humidity set point in the space. Um, if we move over just a little further, this is what they call an air scrubber. So this is a UV light and a catalyst that puts hydrogen peroxide in the air. They do make an ozone producing model and this is the non-ozone. Basically the big difference is, is gonna be it, the ozone model mitigates smells a lot quicker. So if you have indoor litter boxes or something of that nature, uh, burn something in the kitchen. Um, you know, the ozone will mitigate a lot quicker. The other thing this does is it coats all the surfaces within your home, anywhere the airflow in your duct system touches is gonna coat it with hydrogen peroxide. So if your kids come home from daycare and they're touching, sharing germs everywhere, um, that'll help kill that and keep that at bay. It also, air conditioning systems inherently are, are very renowned for microbial growth we, we, is the term we use. So that also helps kill anything that's internal to the system. It's cold, it's dark, it's damp, it's all the right recipe for microbial growth to happen. Um, this has a cell in it that does have to be replaced every two years, uh, but these work amazing. Now with this system, again, this is what we call a hybrid heat pump. Even though it is a water furnace, five series geothermal system, um, it is still a heat pump with a natural gas furnace. Now with this, because the geothermal is so efficient, with a normal hybrid heat pump, we typically set the changeover around 35 degrees, give or take client pending. But this one we can set to 20 degrees. And in fact, I was running some historical data on this unit when it went down to 15 degrees outside, it still did not run the fossil fuel furnace. Um, in this instance, it was a little more budget friendly upfront because we didn't have the electrical infrastructure to go all electric. All the infrastructure was here for the gas. And again, as little as the customer is going to use it, 
And in the event that something did happen, there's a water furnace, five series geothermal system. This gas furnace can take the entire heating load of the home. So they will never be without. The last thing I wanted to hit on was this reduction. I don't know if you remember in the first video, but that was in the horizontal, which as this pipe fills, it blocks a portion of the pipe. We've now relocated it to the vertical portion, which meets manufacturer spec, and as well as this one on the water here. This one was on a 45 degree angle. We now have it in the 90 position. We also installed this, which is the flood stop type system. Um, this is the Residio unit, and it has a Wi-Fi remote sensor down here in the pan. So if water gets in that pan, it talks to this valve, tells this valve to go ahead and slam close just like it's doing right now. And then it shuts the water off. Now, only from here down will drain. And if you're on vacation or wherever, your home's gonna be protected from you know, anything more than this. We built the water heater up. That way we, when we put the emergency pan, we can actually use the emergency pan for its intended purpose. And that's to be piped over to a floor drain, a sump pit, or something of that nature. So if in the event the tank leaks, it, it's not just gonna fill the pan and overflow because many times people plug that. Um, so you have to build it up so that way you have a bit of grade and it drains in. A new expansion tank supported and all this turned out really nice. We've since relocated the condensers as we talked about in the previous video inside. So now we're in a conditioned space. We're not gonna get the expansion and contraction out of the metals and this thing can sit here and just hum along. We had to extend the refrigerant lines and rerun new refrigerant lines um, to each of these units. And then the flow, the water piping comes in, comes through this, which is the flow, what they call the flow center, which is where our pumps are. So this is what moves water in through the ground loop and through your unit. Um, these are built out, that way we got plenty of room, isolation valves, and this is a closed loop, so nothing ever has to be done with it. We freeze protect them. We use Water Furnace's product in our loops. It's called Environol. Um, that way we meet manufacturer spec, there's no question. And it's freeze protected down to 11 degrees. This way when we, you know, even though the loop ground does stay a relatively constant temperature, during peak times when we're getting long, long run cycles, you will actually start to cool the area around the loop and when you get in those long run cycles. So we will get lower temperatures, you know, in some of our loops in Northern Carroll County, get down into the low 30s. Um, and that's why we have to freeze protect them. Um, and that's completely normal in the, in the Northeast of, to get down to those types of temperatures. But when you come to Southern Carroll, it's a little warmer and the loops stay inherently a little warmer into the 40s or so. Um, it's all kind of dependent on, on the season. But we always freeze protect them. Um, they're hydro test, hydrostatic tested, pressure tested. And then this is one of the coolest things I want to talk about. So this is the Symphony. The Symphony is a Wi-Fi interface and it's one of the most powerful tools in residential HVAC. So this allows me, the contractor, to log into your system remotely from anywhere in the world that I have internet in access. So I also get alerts if your system goes into a failure. So I'll get an email and a text message and half the time I find out before the customer even knows that their system is in a failure. Um, so I can log in remotely. I can run reports on historical data and trending down to every 10 seconds of any input output. The tool is amazing. Water Furnace's text team also has access to this as well. Um, the last thing we do, and it's it, inclusive to all of our geothermal systems, is a surge protector. These customers pay a lot of money for these systems. We want to protect it. If you have an inrush of current, this manufacturer is going to back you up. And um, if it gets beyond that, then it would go to your homeowner's insurance. But this is a key add-on to the system along with the symphony.